This week marks the end of my aerobic base building and beginner MAF training. I built up my heart and lungs, and now I need to take my running to the next level. This means it's time to add some new types of runs into my training program. As I'm learning how to make the most of them, hopefully you can too. What is up y'all welcome back to my channel in today's video we're going to continue diving into the world of running and we are going to explore the different types of runs you will likely do in a training program if you've watched any of my videos before you know i've been following the maf training method and i've just finished up my first major aerobic base building period which consisted of nothing but low heart rate zone two low intensity running pretty much no no fancy speed work no heel sprints nothing like that well, if you are a beginner runner or you just want to take your running and your fitness to the next level like me, then this is a video for you. But real quick, if you are new here, welcome. I'm glad to have you. I like to make videos about running, health, wellness, personal growth. So if that interests you and you like the content and you like how I make videos here on YouTube, then consider backhanding the subscribe button like an angry millennial playing pickleball. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So we're gonna talk about how running is not just as simple as putting your shoes on and go running. That was great and effective for my initial aerobic base building to train my heart and lungs to build my aerobic capacity, but running is not always as simple as just go out and put one foot in front of the other. So once you are ready to get started with a full professional or just a more intense, a more structured running training program, you can actually incorporate different workouts or different runs to help increase your fitness and increase your running progress. To talk about the different types of runs in a running program, I'll break it down into two categories aerobic work and anaerobic work. Aerobic means you are doing work with oxygen. Anaerobic means without oxygen. For my MAF training, I was doing aerobic running, very low intensity running, being able to fully breathe and have a comfortable pace to breathe through my nose and out through my mouth at this low intensity. I really recommend any beginner follow this sort of just only doing these types of runs for your first base building. Remember, I compare running to building a pyramid. If you wanna build a really tall pyramid, you need to first start by building a really wide base in order to build up tall or build up higher. The, the wider base you can build, the taller pyramid you can build later on. Aerobic running really trains your body to be more efficient at using fat for fuel. Oxygen is an important part in being able to mobilize fat and use that as an energy source. When you start to be out of breath and you're doing more of your sprint work, your body can't efficiently burn fat as fuel. Once you start to train more intensely, doing faster runs to be more out of breath during your runs at this higher intensity, you are doing anaerobic work. Anaerobic running without oxygen helps train your body to use glycogen and carbohydrates to be more powerful and use your muscles to be stronger. Now to get more specific for aerobic work, you're gonna have two types of runs in a running program. The first being your base or recovery run. They mean the same thing and those words are kind of interchangeable with how they get labeled, but they essentially consist of running at a comfortable conversational pace. If an all out sprint is a 10 out of 10 effort, these runs should be no greater than a three or four out of 10 for intensity. These help improve your cardiovascular system, your heart and your lungs, and make your body more efficient at using fat for fuel. And as the name suggests, these runs actually help aid in your recovery in between more intense sessions. Overall, these runs are the foundation to your training program. So even though you're running slower, you need to take these very serious. A good question to ask yourself on every one of your base or recovery runs is, can I be running a little bit slower right now? The second type of aerobic work you will do in a running program is going to be the long run. In my experience, this is the most important run you do every week that actually improves your running fitness week after week. The long run is all about increasing your mileage and endurance. 
These are also typically done at a slower pace, and the importance is on that endurance, but they are also really great for mental toughness. And mental toughness is really important for race day and any longer duration, any longer distance you are going to do. A good rule of thumb that many follow in a running program is that the long run will consist of about one third of your total weekly mileage. So if you're getting started out and you have a 45 mile week to do that week, then 15 of those miles is going to be solely for the long run. For those of you that maybe running is just a way to stay active and you aren't dead set on training for a certain race day yet to come, then rucking is an excellent alternative to the long run. Another way to look at the long run is that it's not just about the miles, but it's the amount of time you spend on your feet. The purpose of the long run is to really focus on that endurance and that mental toughness of spending time on your feet for a longer time than you're normally accustomed to. So adding some extra weight to your body is a great way to make it just a little bit more of a challenge without full on committing to only running. The other type of running you are going to do in your program is anaerobic work, which this is where running gets really interesting as you aren't solely focused on endurance anymore and now you start to be more focused on speed and strength. And again, anaerobic means exercise or work without oxygen. As you start to get more intense with the exercise you are doing, your body has two other energy pathways in order to give yourself the energy it needs to complete that exercise. You have your ATP CP system and you have your glycolytic system. I could create entire videos about those alone, but know that when you get above that three or four out of 10 intensity on your runs, you start to dip into your other energy pathways, which is going to be your anaerobic work. The first type of anaerobic runs I'll talk about is going to be interval runs. This is going to be all about speed work. You're gonna have alternating periods of sprints or at a higher intensity running with a type of recovery afterwards. This could be just a walk for recovery, a slow jog for recovery, or just all out doing nothing, catching your breath for recovery. Now this type of interval run being focused on speed is really good about improving your speed and your strength over a specific distance. The next type of anaerobic run I'll talk about is a tempo run. This is all about finding that comfortably hard pace or a certain pace for a run, a race, or any other sort of goal pace you're aiming towards. For these types of runs, it's all about having that sustained effort throughout your entire run. It'll be faster than your normal everyday pace for sure, but you still wanna be in control and focused throughout the entire run. Tempo runs are really great to improve your lactate threshold and making you efficient at running faster for longer sustained periods of time. The third type of anaerobic run I'll talk about today is called a fartlek run, which is a funny word, but it's Swedish meaning speed play. It's like a mix between interval speed workouts and tempo runs. What I mean by that is that you don't stop to catch your breath throughout the entire run, but you'll change your pace throughout the run in order to kind of mix it up and have a fun play on speed throughout the entire run. With the little experience I have done of fart licks, I think they are great in helping you realize that you don't need to stop to catch your breath. You can actually have that slower recovery pace to still catch your breath while actively moving forward in your runs. The last type of anaerobic work or run I'll talk about today is known as hill repeats, which are pretty self-explanatory, but incorporating an incline into your speed workouts is a great way to improve your strength and endurance with higher intensities. Overall, hill repeats improve your power and explosiveness off the ground. They can improve your gait and making sure you're landing more on your midfoot to forefoot when you're trying to sprint and be more explosive. And they overall improve your running economy, making you just a better well-rounded runner. Now looking forward in my future running programs, I'll probably follow something like the 80-20 rule where 80% of my runs are still gonna be that aerobic low intensity base recovery runs and long runs, and then 20% will be my speed work. What that looks like in a week is about four to five runs of the base lower intensity and then one speed workout every week. Again, I know some of my audience before I got into running is kind of like a complete beginner like me. So if that is you, I highly recommend doing nothing but aerobic running and that low intensity MAF training method to get your first sort of miles under your feet and get, build up your heart and lungs to make sure your base is nice and wide before you try to build your pyramid up. If you need more info, go check out some of my other videos on the MAF method. 
I promise you it does work. It is a little bit frustrating when you are just beginning. It's a little bit boring when you're just beginning, but I think it also helps you get in touch with kind of like the spirituality or like the meditation of running. That's one of my favorite aspects of running and just the form of meditation and the state of flow that you can really get into that I think in improves every other aspect of my life. Running is a time that is not just about being on my feet, but it's the time that improves my life overall. And there you have it. That's a quick video of all the types of runs in a running program. Incorporating both aerobic and anaerobic work is one of the keys to success in improving your overall fitness and running. So make sure you're doing a little bit of both once you're beyond your initial aerobic base building and are ready to take your running to the next level. Last thing I'll say is always remember to listen to your body. Recovery is just important as the running itself, so listening to your body helps you avoid overtraining. Running is a journey and it's all about finding the balance that works best for you. And even though I'm running to improve my racing times eventually, running is not just a sport. It's a, it's a personal journey. It's about self growth. So keep learning, keep exploring, keep trying new things and keep at it with whatever you're up to in life. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some value out of it. I hope you either made sure you, you know everything about the runs that you are already doing and maybe you learned something new if you are one of those beginners. If you, again, if you liked the content in this video and you wanna have more videos in your subscription feed about running, health, wellness, personal growth, then make sure to like and subscribe and you will catch me in the next video.